The Magical Mystery Tooth. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. So we don't often do this, but we're kind of picking up where we left off from the last episode at the end of 2011. In fact, Saturday, November 7th, 2011, something very special was put up for auction at a place called the Omega Auction House, a UK-based music and cultural memorabilia auctioning company known for selling things like original demo tapes from the Smiths, David Bowie, or a 13-year-old Ed Sheeran, to things like an original Walkman or an LP. This item is not those things, but it is both rare and mundane, original and pretty strange. It's not a riddle, I promise you. It is a tooth. John Lennon's tooth, which was put up for auction at a staggeringly high price and bought for even higher. So where did this tooth even come from? Well, technically, it was a back molar from John Lennon's mouth, obviously. But from there, it went to Lennon's former housekeeper, a woman by the name of Dot Jarlett, that worked for Lennon at his Kenwood home in Weybridge, Surrey. Dot and John Lennon developed a pretty warm relationship, which involved a lot of gift giving and was apparently good enough to share your tooth with, which is pretty close, I think. According to Jarrett's son, Barry, gave Dot the tooth to dispose of sometime between 1964 and 1968, but then he suggested that she keep the tooth to give to her daughter, who was a big Beatles fan. Said Barry Jarlett, quote, she was very close with John, and one day whilst chatting in the kitchen, John gave my mother the tooth. He had been to the dentist to have it removed that day and suggested giving it to my sister as a souvenir as she was a huge Beatles fan. It has been in the family ever since. Yes, Dot eventually gave the tooth to her daughter, who kept it for the past 40 years at her home in Canada. Barry Jarlett said Lennon gave their family many gifts over the years, including a leather wallet and a pearl necklace Lennon gave Dot when he returned from the Beatles tour of Japan. Now, in 2011, Dot was 90, and the Jarlett family thought it might be a good time to finally sell the tooth rather than risk it getting lost, or worse, maybe even forgotten. Lennon's molar was too fragile to be DNA tested, but Omega Auction House took Jarlett's word that it was the real deal. She was at the time 90, and she had gotten some serious time in with Lennon and, of course, the tooth. The Omega Auction House listed the item, which at the time was expected to sell for 16,000 pounds. But guess what? It sold for way more, about £19,000, which was at the time equivalent to over $31,000. So who was the new lucky owner of John Lennon's tooth? A Canadian dentist named Michael Zuck, who I hope displays it proudly in his office. Maybe dental memorabilia can be a new thing? We'll find out after the break. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco-move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is, and it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. So we did some Googling as to what celebrity teeth are out there and if it is a thing, and honestly, it's not. Maybe you're surprised, maybe you're not. The closest celebrity quote-unquote teeth that are on display right now are Charles Manson's false teeth, which you can check out at TV ghost hunter Zach Baggins' Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. Then there are George Washington's teeth, which were dentures made from real teeth, horse teeth, cattle teeth, horse hair, ivory, and lead, on display at Washington's home in Mount Vernon. They were spring-loaded, so they weren't in all the time and were pretty painful to wear, mostly used for his photo ops. But they weren't wood, as the urban legend says. Quote, For a long time, in fact, until 20 years ago, the dentures were not even placed on public display, says Susan Shulwer, senior curator at Mount Vernon. It was thought that it was sort of an invasion of privacy to show Washington's teeth, and it was indelicate. But they were eventually brought out because, quote, It was something that people were interested in, she said, and it is the most asked about item in the museum. Great. Okay, so those are teeth that are on display. But then I thought, what about relics? Fingers, eyes, hair. Certainly Catholics know how to keep that kind of stuff. Most certainly there's some kind of tooth in the mix. But actually in my research, there aren't many noteworthy Catholic dental relics. But in Buddhism, there is. There is a big one, actually. The Temple of Sacred Tooth in Kandy, Sri Lanka, holds the relic of the left upper canine tooth of Buddha himself. 
It is believed that whoever holds the relic of the sacred tooth of Lord Buddha holds the power of government of the country. Of course, as evidenced by Buddha's tooth, teeth are very important, and I think most people should collect them. And Queen Victoria, one of my favorite historical figures, made jewelry out of her own kids' baby teeth and would wear them pretty regularly. For example, she had her favorite floral earrings, the flower being fuchsias, made of her daughter Beatrice's teeth. The style chosen because fuchsias were associated with taste in the Victorian language of flowers. Either way, they are very cool. It's admission time here on Ghost Town. My admission is that I'm pretty sure, among all this tooth talk, that I have my wisdom teeth somewhere in this house that we are recording this podcast from right now. Hopefully, they'll be sold at auction for thousands of dollars someday, but more likely my old molars will be mercifully forgotten, or worst case, thrown out by a grossed-out grandchild of mine, wondering why her grandmother was such a morbid hoarder of disgusting teeth. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco-move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is. And it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie. And we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews. But now, we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie. And we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today.